All right, guys, welcome back to the second, excuse me, the second episode of the Totally Worth It podcast. I'm Kendall. And I'm Haley. And we are your hosts. <laughs> <laughs> um, second episode, only been at it one week. It took us 15 minutes to get that first part started last week. And this week it was about one minute, maybe. Yeah. So it's getting easier. <clears throat> um, so, how are you, dear? I'm tired. <laughs> tired? Why are you tired? <laughs> um, I didn't well, go to sleep till like 2 a.m. and had to get up at 6 for grand opening. Why didn't we go to sleep till 2 a.m.? Because we were rebuilding my website. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. true. But you were doing what today? We had our grand opening for our boutique grand opening for her small business yeah. did it go well it went amazing it was way better than we originally thought it would go so yeah, yeah there was, was a good. lot of people there there was um i took our daughter and uh we went and said hello yeah and filmed the ribbon cutting that was fun um I've never known anyone that was in a ribbon cutting ceremony before. It was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then me and Joe went and ate breakfast, and I worked the rest of the day. You worked the rest of the day. We came back here and rolled around the living room floor. Yep. And I thought I was doing something on your website, and it didn't work out like I thought it did. You still got a lot done though. Yeah, I did, but <clears throat> it was it was very uh. Defeating. Yeah. Emotionally defeating. Yeah, there's a lot of products. Yeah. I thought, to clarify, she's switching website providers, so we had to move all of her products, which I don't understand how she has so many products, but we had to move them all manually, one by one, over to the uh, the new provider. And I got to uh, thinking that I was going to do it for her while she was gone to help her out because I knew she was working all day. And so I got to go in and I was in the zone. I had the music playing in the background. I was I was putting them in data entry and I thought I was close to the end because the little drop down menu only had seven numbers, so I thought it was only seven pages of products and I made it to the seventh page and then beside the seven there was an eight. <laughs> and I said, What the heck? I think and then it I goes clicked, to like I clicked, 14. <laughs> then I clicked on the 8, and then there was a 9 beside that. So apparently I didn't even make it halfway. Yeah. But but that's a still a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. You're welcome. I'm thankful. You're welcome. Um, I could have just watched cartoons the whole day. You yeah. Know? I'm gl- well, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what we've been doing today. Yeah. But uh, first episode last week we talked about a little bit about who we who we are how we came to how be. we came to be um kind of kind of about where we're from that kind of deal um so this week we're kind of uh getting into the thick of it a little bit <clears throat> i guess so so what i did was i told Haley to come up with three two or three things that she topics that she wanted to talk about and um for full disclosure, she didn't come up with those three topics until about 15 <laughs> minutes ago. Well, like I said, I've worked all day. So. Yeah, well, there's da- there was days before today. But yeah, but I, d- I don't. Yeah. It's been a busy week. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> okay. Um, So, anyway, I will I will kick it off. Yeah, you do that. <clears throat> I'll kick it off and we can ping pong. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will kick it off. So, uh, one thing that I know that my wife absolutely detests, and she didn't hate it as much when we first got together, um, but she really hates it now, and that is fantasy football. Oh, God. (laughs) So, I like, I'm I'm very uh, into fantasy football, and... uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, then I don't know what what rock you're living under. But uh, fantasy football is basically you and some friends 
um, start a league, and you each get a certain amount of players. You have a draft. It's a it's a full it's a whole ordeal. It's a whole thing. It's too <clears> much. And you draft your players of your team, and then every time that player does something good in an actual real life football game, you get points. And each week you play against another person in your league. Um, and then eventually, towards the end, you get to the Super Bowl if you're good, and it's very competitive. It's not even competitive though. But you're it is. not the one. But it's very doing competitive. It. You are though. But you picked that. You just person. picked a person. Yeah. But she hates it, and... Well, the thing is, is I didn't hate it. Like, the first year we were together, you did it, and you were in a league, whatever, and you actually won the whole thing, and it was that was cool. But... It was cool. That was, and that was fine, because I feel like you still weren't, like, uh, consumed with it. But then it's like, this year... You were in three leagues, yeah, three. one of which you started your own. <laughs> and then it's like, we had to give money to all these people. <laughs> and then you didn't win nothing. You no, won I, nothing. I did win. I won $60. Well, you sure didn't tell me that. Yeah, but, well, no, I won. Hang on. Was it 60 or no. 20 It was $20. Okay, so you won and I was what gonna, you put and into I, it. And the, but the commissioner, I was going to buy that thing, so he just took it off. Oh my gosh, whatever. Just took it off of that. But it but besides the point, it's the fact that you decided to insert yourself into three <laughs> leagues. I and will when say I, when I tell you though, <clears throat> for the past twenty something weeks, I feel like <laughs> you are on your phone twenty four seven. That's like, only on Saturdays and Sundays though. Yeah, but I mean you're gone during the week, you're working. So it's like when I do see you on the weekends, or no, because you still have Monday night football, you have Wednesday night football. No, there's no Wednesday night football. You have Thursday night football. Monday night and Thursday night and Sunday. That's it. Okay. Three out of seven days. But you have 75 people in a group message. and, And Monday and Thursday night football is only one game. Okay. Okay. That's besides the point. Your phone dings 24-7, <laughs> and now I'll be talking to you dead into okay, a conversation look, to pull your phone out look, and be though, like, but look, oh, I didn't hear anything you just said. Sorry. <laughs> but look, I will admit that three leagues is a bit much, and I'm not going to do that again next year. You either get in one or start your own, and that's it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be in three. Yeah, I will one. Say that. I'll say that. I'm not going to be in no, three. No, you'll be in one. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. <laughs> I'm not going to be in three leagues. You'll be in one. We'll see. One or none. We'll see. No, it ain't going to be none. <laughs> that's big facts. Big wrong. Like, I want you to have Incorrect. your your guy thing. And that's the thing about it is that one really the only thing that I did for hobby or for fun outside of normal. I can hear your nose breathing into the microphone. I know. I don't like it. I can't <laughs> breathe. I'm stopped up. It's okay. You just need to point it, point it up. Point it down towards your mouth a little bit more, and your nose. Is that better? Maybe, yeah. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but but what I did for fun back then, before I did that, was uh, I played music, and then when we had Joe, I don't really play music anymore. Yeah. So I have to fi- I had to find a new hobby. And so I found that I really enjoyed fantasy football because it one, it's fun because it involves sports, which Mm -hmm. I like, and two, it involves other people that you know. Yeah. So you get to one, you get to interact with friends. Two, you get to interact with friends who actually are are all into the same thing. Yeah. So it would be like you getting in a big like boutique group chat with a bunch of random boutique owners. I hate group chats. (laughs) Yeah, but sports is fun. I, and I get that, and I don't have a problem with it. It's just that when you're home <clears throat> or you're not at work and your phone is going off, on even on days that you're not even playing football, it's just like, and then but y'all I, I just talk friend, about I can't nothing. be friends with those people? That's fine, but you need to pick like two out of the 30 <laughs> You can't because all those people. You can. You don't know half of them people. I know, but they're all in the league. I didn't make that group chat. I just got added to it. Well, there's four, either there's silence it to where you don't even hear the notification. I can do that. 
or just like don't even look at your phone that day. I can do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. The bottom line is I enjoy playing fantasy football. You don't like it. It's not that I don't like it because I do like football, but it's because of it, because of this fantasy stuff and like how many leagues you're in, how much time it consumes. You get pissed off if you don't check your phone in time before the game starts. (laughs) You're like running out the church trying to get to your phone before one o'clock. Like, here's what happened. It's so annoying. I think that being in three leagues pushed it a little overboard this year. (laughs) Okay, a little. And it would have been much simpler and you would not have hated it as much had i just been in the one yes that's what i've been saying this whole time be in one and, and i'm be okay done. with that and that's probably what i'm gonna do next year okay but anyway i just wanted to get that out of there uh. out in the air <laughs> and i hate it because i genuinely love football like i'm a huge cowboys fan and i and i want you to have nothing to do with it and i want you to want me to do something that I enjoy. I do. I want you to do lots of things that you enjoy. And I enjoy fantasy football. And that's great. But when I'm like dead having a conversation with you <laughs> and you heard nothing that I said and then you aggravate, you're aggravated at me. Like, Why am I aggravated at you? No, I'm saying when that situation happens, you'll be like, what? What? I, I do not say you that. You have done that before. No, and I I'll be like, I that. know you are not getting in with me because I your homeboy done never, broke his ankle I and is ne- out for the season. <laughs> I've never said that. Okay. But ultimately, I'm still going to play fantasy football. Whatever. I just... One league. <laughs> one. We'll see. No, one. We'll you see. just said it But I'm still going to play fantasy football. One. One fantasy football. League. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. What's next? I don't know. Okay. Let me see. Um. Okay. What are... I don't want to say icks. More of like phobias. Ooh. What are What are things that you just absolutely cannot stand? Because I feel like I have a list of my long... <laughs> Uh, like in in a person, in a person, or just things in general in life, like either I don't, I guess a phobia. I mean, I guess it's like a fear of something or just something you just despise, despise, or hate. can't stand. Um, I'll give you mine. Okay, I'll give you my first. Okay, one. feet. Feet. Okay. Feet. Hate yeah. feet. Hate mine, hate they yours, don't. I hate everybody's. I don't want to. <laughs> like, I love Joe's because she has like cute little baby little feet, baby but feet. she's starting to turn into like a toddler. <laughs> and it's starting to turn into real people. I'm feet. about to have to cut it off. Like, I can't be touching your feet no more. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, I, feet don't really bother me that much. Mm. Um, I'm not like, uh, I'm not overly going to go out of my way to like rub rub your feet or something, but they don't yeah, really no. bother me. I don't. I think I've only asked you to rub my feet one time in the four years that we've been together. Every now and then, when 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 we're going to bed at night uh, and the lights are out, I just like slide my foot over and uh, like, touch her leg with my foot. Makes you like convulse. <laughs> I hate it. Um, I think uh, one thing that really grosses me out that. Um, a large majority of people don't get grossed out over is lipstick. Oh yeah, you hate. I lipstick. think it is the most disgusting thing, and it is so not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. It brings color to your face. Nobody cares. Nobody <laughs> wants that. But we we do it for us. We don't even we don't do it yeah, for well, you. Yeah, well, also do it. Don't do it for the courtesy of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I know you don't. Wear lipstick. I know you don't. Like I wore and I appreciate, lip gloss I appreciate today that for my event, but I don't even own lipstick. It's disgusting, it, it, and especially do not even come around me, bro. When you people wear lipstick and drink drinks mm-hmm. and sit Their the cup bottles. around a water bottle, if I see red on the tip of a plastic water bottle, <laughs> I want to punt that water bottle 
into the yard. Yeah. You always know when my mom's it's around. It's disgusting, and I hate it. <laughs> my mom always has it. lipstick on, and Kendall's I just, don't just understand. like, uh. I don't understand it. Because it'd be different if it's like ink or something. But it's like... Well, they make lip stain. Yeah, that I would be more okay with that. But it's literally like... It's gross. Yeah. It's gross. Yeah. I do want to try the lip stain because you like, you put it on and it dries and you peel it off and then there's like nothing there. It's just your lips. Yeah. But they're just like tinted. I could probably get down with that. Yeah, because it doesn't come off on anything. But, oh God, and during COVID when people have <laughs> lipstick on their masks, yeah. oh my God, get out. <laughs> get out of here. Go somewhere with that. That's disgusting. Yeah, it, it can get It's nasty. awful. Um, you have any more? Um, birds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's terrified of birds. I hate birds. And it, like, I, I don't know. I don't even know when it happened. Well, I tell you back, I do know when it happened. I think I was, like, nine or ten years old. And we were, I was at my grandparents house and my cousin was with me and he was i mean he's like your age um and we were out at the barn playing and we had ducks and chickens and all this stuff and i'm not afraid of chickens that's like the only bird i guess i'm not afraid of but we had a duck and his name was roger Roger, and he, Roger the duck. my cousin, picked this duck this up. This story's getting more redneck this, <laughs> the second, as the seconds go He on. picked this duck up and threw it at me, and it landed on my head and peed. <laughs> and I took off running, and it chased me down the driveway, like a half mile long driveway. I a was duck. terrified. I was done after that. Roger the duck. Yeah. I don't like ducks. I hate. I don't hate. Ducks Every time we go to the beach, dish. she gets freaked seagulls, out. With I can't birds. do seagulls. She won't even pigeons. go on the balcony if there's birds flying around. Well, we just went I'm to the like, beach the other weekend, and there were birds everywhere. Yeah, out there. because they live there. They don't live. They on fly balconies. around. They, they have, have wings. nests somewhere. They, they can, have nests. Well, go fly over the water. Yeah, you're sitting right in front of the water. It's where the hotels are, but. No, there were like five pigeons on our balcony. That's absurd. <laughs> no, it's pigeons. I there understand are, that God created them. You realize how much purpose. bigger we are than that animal? It's not like they I have know. fangs or poison or something. It doesn't matter. You leave your door cracked open, they're flying in. Like when we were renovating the building for the new store, Oh God! birds were flying in everywhere and they'd be up in the rafters and I just I can't. I can't. It stresses me out That's so tough. bad. That's tough. I just, if there's birds involved, count me out. <laughs> yeah. I've got one. Okay. Um, I absolutely abhor people who, the only thing that they know how to talk about is themselves mm -hmm. and their achievements. Mm -hmm. I cannot stand being around people who... All they want to talk about is themselves, and it's not. And, and it it pisses me off even more when it's someone who you can tell that they're not trying to do it. Yeah, that it, they just don't know how to talk about anything else. Yeah, they don't have the social skills yeah. to talk. Like when I enter a group of people, my initial thought is, "Who are these people? How can I get them engaged in conversation?" So my initial thing when I walk up to someone, if I'm talking to someone, is I'm going to ask them something about them. Yeah. Because if someone asks you about yourself, then go for it. Yeah. But it should be ping pong. But if no one asks you what you do for a living. Yeah. It's obnoxious. And I hate being around people like that. And I'm around people like that all the time with my job. Yeah. And... It just, it really gets on my nerves. Yeah. And I'm glad that you're not like that. Um, I hate talking about myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why <laughs> it was so difficult it. to get you to do this. Yeah. Um, But it just, I don't know. It's it just like, as soon as someone opens their mouth and starts talking about all the stuff they've done, I just want to go like, stick my head in the, in the dirt. Yeah. You know? Now, yeah, and it, it is different when you're asked like, hey, 
did you did this happen? Yeah, because it lets you know that that person wants to know. They're interested. Yeah, which means you automatically know that you telling it to them is not going to be something obnoxious. they want to know. Yeah. It's yeah. not. Let me just and tell then you after you tell them that, the proper response would be for them to ask you something about yourself. Yeah, not to keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> there's also some people that won't say anything about themselves, but if you ask them one thing, they'll tell you their life story. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be around those either. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of my er- eeks, mm-hmm. irks. Your irks. Yeah. What else you got? Um, I'm. Sh- I mean, I'm sure I have a ton but <laughs> um a lot of mine have to do with me <laughs> no a lot of mine have to do with people's children people's children and it's not Explain. even the, it's what not the, it's not even the child what do you mean when when parents don't take the initiative to do their research um to find out things for themselves. Oh yeah, I see where you're going with this. But no, I, just in general, like I saw, um, on Facebook a couple weeks ago. I don't even think it's like somebody I actually know. I just came across of it. But um, this woman's baby, young child. I don't even think it was a year old. Um, had been super, super sick. Like continuously, like RSV, flu, ear infections, yeah. bronchitis, whatever you want to call it, like back to back. Like poor child could not catch a break. But in the same post that they're asking for prayers for this child, they can't figure out what's wrong. He's sick all the time. But then they say, thank the good Lord that so-and-so brought brought him some Mountain Dew this morning. <laughs> But your child isn't even a year old. <laughs> you want, but like we got, to, we have to use common sense here. That's like uh, me and Joe. I took Joe one day when you were, I think it was when you were working at the other place. Mm-hmm. I took Joe to the park mm-hmm. here in town, and uh, we were there, and there was a lady out there with her. I don't want to say infant because the baby was probably, I'd say probably four months, five months old. I guess that that would that's an infant. That's an infant. That's an you're infant. infant until you're one. When I say infant, I think of like fresh out the gate, you know. Yeah. Um, but he was like, it was a boy. He was like four, five, six months old, maybe. And they had a bottle of, and I'm not judging the people. But I am judging them for this. Yeah. But they had a bottle of orange crush and was letting this baby sip on it. And I'm like, that, bro. See, and that's my problem. This kid is fitting to. Babies aren't even supposed to have water yeah. under six months old. Yeah. But you give them orange crush and Mountain Dew and sweet tea and they're not even supposed to have water yeah. and you can't figure out why your child And then is when sick. they turn four and they're allergic to grass and water, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, and they're allergic to sunshine. <laughs> yeah, th- I think that's they're like, just oh, my, God. like, this, do your research. Like, you want to know why your child is so yeah, sick? Is Let's annoying. start looking at what we're that doing. Like, what are we eating? What are we doing? What and are it's we- also annoying when you, uh, it, parenting is tricky because you... You can't just walk up to someone and their child and be like, hey, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You know? Because, um, I mean, at the, end of that, at the end of the day, we're all just trying to survive. That's facts. And, uh, but if you are asked about something and you give a reason that you do something, somebody says, hey, why do you do this with your kid? And you say, A, B, C. Yeah. And then they say, Ah, that's stupid. Just give him Pepsi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that that really pisses me off. Mm-hmm. Like that's fine, but yeah, but you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I don't mean to be judgy, but dang. I just, when it comes to kids, like they the kid can't, can't they they can't do it for themselves. Yeah. It is our job 
to protect them and teach them and yeah. you we can are see. responsible for their well being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if somebody can explain to me on this planet why you think it's okay to give an infant soda of any kind, I don't care what color it is. Just I think our, our daughter is what she's 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 two and, two and a half, half today. today. She she's has still never had never soda. tasted so. And that's not, I'm not that's not like a bragging thing. Oh, like, I'm bragging. I, I mean, <laughs> I take pride in it a little bit, yeah. but there's no reason for them to yeah. have soda. You can't want it if you've never had it. Yeah, and you, you know? can't be addicted to it if yeah. you've never craved at some, it. At some point, is she going to be somewhere when she's older with? Uh, a friend and their family or her grandparents or whatever, and she's going to get a freaking Happy Meal and a Coca-Cola? Yes. Yeah. But it's not going to be today. <laughs> and it ain't going to be me that gives it yeah, to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Facts. she's had tea and lemonade yeah. and juice, you know, whatever. Yeah, but, like, yeah. soda? Why, yeah. does, why do babies need carbonation? We feel bad after we drink it. <laughs> Yeah, like we, if it makes us feel like crap, what are, what yeah. is it doing to their little tiny bodies yeah. that can't fight off? They, they can't, they're not, they're not grown. Yeah. And then we wonder, oh my gosh, this is like the 17th ear infection this year. Yeah. I mean, let's just look at reality. Yeah. <laughs> let's look at the facts. <laughs> and it's, it's almost like people don't. And I, because I, I kind of was this way when we first had her too, or at least bef- right before we had her, I wasn't really on the educational parenting train. Yeah. It's just like you have them and you give them everything that you were given. Yeah. Kind of thing. That's enough. And <laughs> I mean, I understand that now and I know that, that we adapt and, yeah. and move forward, but um, a lot of people never leave that stage and not saying that you're better or worse than them. It's just but times change things change things yeah. evolve do your own research you owe it to your own child yeah like there's a reason that mm-hmm. if, if joe if there's a reason that when she comes home from her grandparents house that she's a psychotic nut mm-hmm. and it's not because her grandparents are influencing her she's two and a half yeah she barely knows everybody's names yeah <laughs> It's because she ate a bag of Cheetos and drank two cups of lemonade, you know? Yeah. Before she came home. Yeah. And then when she's here, she doesn't do that. Yeah. It's just like there's no And I know that that's no way around it. It's a grandparent thing, like they say whatever they're I don't know. I get real touchy with that subject too because I understand Yes you do. That it's their grandparents and um let them live and ain't gonna kill them blah 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 all the things that grandparents say but at the same time you are that child's parent and what you say goes so if i say she cannot have this as soon as i walk out the door do not give that to her because that's so disrespectful yeah and nobody has a right to my child yeah because i get that if if you do that after I just said no and left, and I find out, you just won't see him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's a psycho. I, I, I'm not a psycho. She's I'm a just, psycho. I'm responsible for her, not anybody else. Yeah. I get that. And I hold that to a high standard. I mean, I, I'm 100% with you, man. Yeah. I just, sometimes I have to dull your sharp edges, <laughs> you know? I, I it, just, there, there's also a part of it that is, when I was talking about how we just give them everything that we got when we were kids, if you think about it this way, the the grandparents, all that they know is what they gave us. And what I have seen, that is horrifying. Yeah, yeah. I hate the fact that... <laughs> but it's also like you can train yourself, but you can't necessarily... Train your train parents. your parents at the same time. Yeah, you'll go crazy trying to do that. Yeah. so you have and, to pick and, and choose that. your battles. They and it's fine. They can be the grandparents. They're probably not going to change because they don't know. They don't They're understand. Not. But th- and that's fine. If she wants to have 
some gummies while she's there, whatever. Just be respectful of what I specifically tell you she yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. have. Like no freaking whatever, you know. Yeah. Reese cup. <laughs> yeah. Noodles and like noodles we don't or need Cheetos for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. And now for lunch, yeah. if you want to give her a ham sandwich and give her a handful of Cheetos, fine. Yeah. I'll deal with it when I get home when she's acting like a nut job. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Cause she's let's always just, crazy. When she, she's always it. crazy when she comes back from there. Yeah. Even if it's for like a couple hours. Yeah. She's she, like, why? She comes up. back that whole evening. She gets like three whoopings, <laughs> at least. <laughs> you don't think so? That's not true. Uh, no. I, she just, you can just tell when she's had more sugar than Why'd she you normally give me the gets eyes here. Like should I say the word spanking? What should I say? I don't know. Oh my, you give me some you gonna get shut down, huh? You gonna get shut down? You gonna get a shut down for saying the word spanking? I don't think so. I mean, this you, is people, independent media. Yeah, that's true. This is where the power. This is where the power lies. Days, this know? is where the power is. People go up in arms if you discipline yeah. your child. That'd be true if we were on NBC or <laughs> Fox News. Okay. Do you have any more? That's like my uh, top three. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I have any more. I mean, I do. I'm sure we could probably yeah. go on for hours about that. But yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Uh, so shifting gears a little bit. Um, talk a little bit about. Um, so obviously, we mentioned in the first episode that we are a Christian family. Mm-hmm. Um. Which obviously would imply that we go to church. Mm-hmm. So as a as a young family in in the southeast of America in the Bible Belt, how do we? What what did we as a family, especially like from beginning to now, what have we looked for in a church? Mm. Because we've looked, we've <laughs> went to several different versions of a church yeah we've kind of like when we first got together we went to a church and um the one over there on nine that we went to oh yeah we went there um but that was before we had a kid yeah so we're not even thinking about the kid stuff yeah just Um, church in general yeah and then when we go when we moved here we went to the little teeny church way out in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Um, where with friend. like, yeah, where my friend was the pastor, and they had like five people, and four of the five people were over a hundred and thirty. <laughs> and then we left there at some point. Yeah. And went. Joe to, was like four months yeah. old. And then we went to your home church. Mm-hmm. Just kind of talk a little bit about that. How we moved from those couple places and why okay um well i I think the only reason we originally left the first church on nine was one because we up and moved into an apartment in monroe yeah it was just too far yeah that was just not it was a good church though yeah i do i still i still love that church yeah i, I like those I people on there um so there wasn't really anything I don't want to say wrong. No, 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 no. Um, it was just distance. Yeah. Um, and then when we moved to Kershaw, when we left our apartment and we moved into your parents, we did visit second a few times because yeah. I was pregnant. We did, but you weren't a fan. I wasn't a fan because I enjoyed it. I in that I guess that's just like the difference. Because there's in a lot us. of preferential. There's a lot of preference that comes in when you talk, start looking at different churches. Yeah. So I grew up, um, originally like independent Baptist. I was born into that, and nothing. I mean, nothing against that. Everybody has their own little niche yeah. of Baptist yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> um. Just for full disclosure, we don't believe that Baptists are the only people that are going to heaven. No, absolutely not. But you tend, for the most part, you do tend to stick with what you're born into. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, within variation. Mm -hmm. Um, So, 
Um, I don't. Where am I? Where am I going with this? You're I, talking about independent. Okay, so I grew you up. Grew up in that. Yeah, so it was very um, strict, I guess you'd say. Like, yeah, women. You're not gonna catch women in the church wearing pants. Yeah. Um, if you're dating somebody and you're sitting in the pew, you better have a Bible in between you. <laughs> um, I mean, just very traditional. That probably would have been beneficial at some point. Well, yeah, but you know, just there's there's a lot that goes into that, and there. That's where dating took place in my childhood at church. Uh. But like, there's independent Baptist, and then there's like, if you could call it Danny, the, the cult, yeah, of independent Baptist. I was not in in a cult <laughs> whatsoever, <laughs> but um, it is a lot of that, that you're you're drilled into so many things that are unnecessary. Yeah. Like it was, I don't want to say drilled, but it was just taught into us that women you know, do not wear pants in the church. That's like yeah. a cardinal sin. Yeah. And then you grow up and, you know, I found salvation for myself. Yeah. And I realized, hey, there's nowhere in the Bible that says I'm not going to heaven because I wore pants. Yeah. So it's they were it was just very traditional and I as I got older I realized like this isn't this isn't my cup of tea anymore. Yeah. Now I still believe the like fundamental, um, like principles, I guess. Like, yeah. like I prefer a King James version Bible over mm-hmm. any other. Yes, she does. Lord bless her <laughs> and her King James. And now yeah. I do have a ESV yeah. and I do compare sometimes when I'm reading and studying, but that's just my preference. I don't find it hard to read or understand. Like some people do. But we also, in the school we grew up in, that was all we used to. So we learned how to read that Bible. Yeah. Um, I got a godly woman, y'all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, she said reading and studying. What a keeper. What? Hush. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I think what you're, I, where, correct I, me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're getting at is that you, when you growing up, your your upbringing sort of has a has a effect on the type of church that you want to be a part of as a grown up. Yes, because whether that's negative or positive. Oh yeah, yeah, and the it, things yeah. you hated about it, the things you loved about it, and you right. kind of take those. You you look for the places that don't have the things you hated growing up, and you look for right, the things yeah. that you loved, and you want to find those. Well, I remember being like seven or eight years old and we we left that very first church and we went to yeah. um I the church that I I say that I really grew up in because I was there from like eight to twenty. To the one that we went to. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um That was a good that was a good church. Yeah. I, I like that church. I love I love all those people there. Um and I think that was, it's like that's where I slowly started pulling out of that super mm-hmm. strict independent yeah. belief. Um, it was still traditional, but it wasn't as like down your throat, yeah. I guess. Um, but then, you know, I got older and like when I started dating, I went to church with, you know, whoever I was dating. and. Sure. Then I realized, like, oh, okay, there people do like wear pants to church. There is <laughs> other music, like you can. It's okay to like yeah. have drums yeah, yeah, in yeah. your church, yeah. and like I just didn't. It was like a guitar, piano, and a or- organ. Yeah, that was it. I'm surprised I had a guitar. Yeah, and then it's like, you know, at some point somebody started sliding in a CD. <laughs> play the track so like t- to go to a church that had music yeah it was just so eye-opening and at first i was just like no this is this ain't it yeah but um i mean i really grew to love it and now it's almost like i still 
I love all those traditional hymns. I mean, yeah, n- not knocking them at all because they're beautiful. But I love it now when churches can take the old stuff, yeah, and kind of breathe a new life or, into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, just kind of yeah. Don't change it. Don't take away from it. Just a little. Yeah. Redo. Yeah. Reboot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to call I got it. You. I got you. Um, but I'm so. S- with with that in mind about you know your upbringing and um the things that you experienced with church as a, a growing up how did that impact the way that you as a married person look for and try and find a, a church cuz obviously i think we we have a church now that we love and that we're members of and I'm sure we can talk uh, in in a little bit about why we like that place, but how did that? How did your those things affect you as a married person? Because once you're married and you you're looking for a church for your family, it's not just you, you're looking for a church that you can enjoy, and you're looking for a church also that your spouse is gonna right. gonna enjoy as well, and that makes it difficult because sometimes you have different preferences and stuff. So how did that? Uh, well, I, I definitely think once we got married, we started to see, and even when, I mean, when we were dating, we started to see the differences in, like, because you went off to college and you yeah. studied, you know, music and you did the whole worship band, yeah. Just yeah. whatever you call it. That was it. a big part of my... Um, and that was very new sure contemporary whatever i don't yeah whatever you call it um and so some of that stuff i'm just still like uh it doesn't like it's not my cup of tea yeah but i have grown to really truly love new modern sure contemporary worship music to an extent yeah um i but i honestly feel like and i know that music is not why you decide to go to a church but i do feel like it can play a big part oh yeah because i feel like your music does set the tone sure for whatever your pastor's gonna bring yeah yeah, as a message like you like it can be yeah um so and i think one of the main things once we were married and like we knew we were gonna have a family was i wanted a church that that had growth yeah that that would just however many kids we had no matter what they were going to be like showered with jesus yeah like i wanted them to be in things and be submerged in things to out like because i mean your ultimate goal as parents is you want your child to know Jesus at the earliest age as possible. Yeah. And so a church that was growing and had, you know, I don't want, it isn't, I don't, I don't even want to say a large youth children's ministry, but just one that was yeah promising. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, like I grew up very, fire and brimstone preaching like yeah. i don't like a quiet church mm-hmm. like i need it to be loud i want to feel yeah that, that was one thing that had me a little bit <clears throat> not worried but one thing that kind of threw me back a little bit when we were looking for churches that your you seem to just not be able to understand or thrive in a, a church that's not vocal. Yeah, and I mean and that's that, and that was hard for me to get to wrap my head around. Well, it was just hard for me to, I guess, understand it because yeah. when you come from churches that are loud, yeah, and I don't even want to say loud, that just like that. Feel like, alive. Yeah, feel alive. You feel emotion. You yeah. feel, you can feel, you know, the Holy Spirit. And to just, for me, it's hard because I feel like once you've experienced that, and then you go and sit in a church where, like, if you sneeze, 
the whole church is about to like stop what they're doing and look at you. They're clearly not even paying attention to what your pastor's saying. And if he can't engage yeah. enough with the congregation to get a response out of them. Sure. I just, and I mean, not everybody worships the same. And I yeah. have learned that not everybody's yeah. going to put, raise their hand. Not everybody's going to say things out loud. Not everybody's going to, run laps around the building like everybody has their own sure. way of worshiping but it just it's hard and it's also hard for me to stay focused if yeah my i can't keep my attention that's why like i, get, I have I to take that. notes every that. sunday because if i'm not i can't i can't take notes well you just have chicken scratch handwriting well that and when i take notes i get mm -hmm. distracted from the message no it's having the exact opposite I'll be writing and then I'll write some stuff that has nothing to do with the message. Yeah. That I'm just thinking about. Um, I think that I was not prepared for the task of choosing a church as a married person. Yeah. It's a lot harder for sure. I was not expecting that to be as difficult as <clears throat> it was. Um, because I, I had, I felt, I kind of felt like the things that I liked and, and these are not make it or break it things, Yeah. but I felt like it, every time it, that I would find somewhere where I'd be like, this is it. She's going to love this. This is a, I, this is great. You would be like, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> and then my whole world just crumbles. And then the same thing, vice versa, when we would go somewhere else and you'd be like. God, that was so good. And I'll be like, yo, why was everybody so loud? <laughs> but that's crazy to me because I feel like you grew up in, in a, a, from what I heard. I mean, I wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the, yeah, it was a different kind of loud though. Yeah. It was a different kind of loud where they, they knew the place you, you knew the place that was going to be loud. Yeah. You knew what time it was going to get loud. Yeah. And uh, some of the places that we've been to that, that you were more accustomed to were just kind of, to me, they were sort of unnecessarily loud. And not in a bad way or a negative way. I just didn't understand it, like what you said about the people worshiping differently. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can look at the Bible and see a thousand examples of people worshiping differently, but... I mean, I just think about it like this. If, well, I don't know how to think about it when it comes to two people. Yeah. Because you have to find the puzzle piece that fits both. And that's hard. Yeah. Um, And I think we did find that the first time when we went to that church that you grew up at. Yeah. Um, Because I went and didn't know that, I mean, we weren't, we didn't even go to a church service. Yeah, it we was went like a, to fall, a festival. fall festival, and I, everybody was just so nice and and everybody like talked to you like they already knew yeah I had no I'd never because met I any feel of like them. when and, when I went because you weren't there you had to work and you came later and so I do feel like when everybody saw me it was like like a reunion almost I hadn't seen them yeah you know in a couple of years so then it was like. Oh, Haley's here. And then when you came, it's like everybody's like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, let's just love them. It was them. just odd. Like they just treated me so <clears throat> like I was just a part of their family. And that is what I look for in a church. Yeah, and it really did make a difference. I mean, it it was very. I didn't even care necessarily what their service was like. And it, well, I that night I wasn't saying I want to go to that church, but that caused me to say I want to go see what their service is like. Yeah, like we even watched one online. Yeah, we I watched think, one before. online. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, sure. And it was easy for me to say yes because I already there, knew yeah. what I was going back into. Oh, yeah. I bet you were like, oh, yeah, I got him now. <laughs> we're going no. We're going to this one. <laughs> no, that, that was not it. And it really that's surprised what that's me. That's what I would have said. That, and, it, and because we had had those differences in churches, it really did surprise me when you were like, I really enjoyed that. Because I do feel like, it was a, it's a very good mixture of the like the fundamentals yeah and it's not quiet yeah 
but it's not unnecessarily loud, as you would say. <laughs> Music not the greatest. Yeah. That was probably like the one thing that I always just was I yeah. wanted we, more. You for. and me even did music a lot there. Yeah, we did. Um <clears throat> I think that for me as a person I could go I could go to a church that's hooping and hollering and I could have a great time. Mm -hmm. And I could also go to a church that is predominantly quiet. Yeah. And I could also have a great time there. I'm but, not gonna say that I couldn't, but it would be very hard for me just because just because it would be hard for me to focus. Yeah. But nothing to that church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why there are so many different churches because yeah. everybody has their own, their own personal preferences preference. and styles. Yeah. But I, I, I think that the church that we finally ended up at is... It well, is such a good mixture. Yeah, it's such a good mixture of everything because one thing... <laughs> There's a few things that is super important to me for a church. And this list has changed since we've had a kid. Mm -hmm. um, number one is that there are other children in the church. Right. Nothing against churches that don't have a lot of kids. That just sucks for them. Yeah. You know, and I can't. You just can't make that happen. It yeah. just has to have. Young people yeah. have to be there and have kids. And you know that <laughs> you're the children are the church of tomorrow. Yeah. So you so can almost there, see that you can see the church thriving through the amount of young people at the church, not yeah. just kids, but babies and teenagers. Yeah. And that was a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and a church that is doing mm -hmm. things ministering outreach yeah yeah and serving not, not even just that but just a church that is connected outside of sunday morning yeah which i know that we have not yet become as connected as i would like to be um but that opportunity is there yeah for sure um and that's a big thing for me and the third thing is the Preacher can't be a goofball. <laughs> Elaborate. Uh, I, what I mean is that the the preacher has to, in my opinion, I, I, I love preachers who are enthusiastic and they're great communicators, but if we only spend five minutes on the Bible. Oh, yeah. I, I don't care who your favorite football team is. I don't care about right. your 75 analogies that you're going to relate back to one verse of Scripture in the last five minutes. Yeah. That's what I mean by a goofball. Yeah. I need someone who's going to um, expository preach, like, the Bible. Yeah. And show, yeah. show what it says through their words. Yeah. And I feel like our pastor does that. Yeah. And, and and also connects it with current events mm -hmm. and lo real life. Yeah. And so I feel like that we kind of have found That's the, why, I, like, I've been so excited recently because I know, I don't want to say excited for this reason, but, you know, our church took a trip to Israel for 10 days yeah. and then came back and like three days later that's when Israel yeah, got started. hit yeah. and they've been like he's been in constant contact with people over there yeah. their guides over there and anything he has preached since then he has brought it full circle with what is currently happening yeah. happening now yeah. in today's society and is like shown you know, where we're at on the timeline of prophetic events. And I just, I, I love that. Like, yeah, not just because it's, to me, it's just fascinating because yeah. we're watching the Bible unfold in front of us. And it's yeah. like, people still just don't get it. And I it. think there's a lot of churches and a lot <clears throat> of preachers out there who preach and they do everything really well. But at the end of the day, it seems like they treat the Bible as if it's a comic book. Like, and what I mean by that is, like, 
Everything in it is super awesome, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to preach it, but it could never happen. Yeah. Like a, a Superman comic book. Yeah. You know? And I just feel like our church, and our and there are tons of churches that people can and should go to that are not our church. Oh, yeah. Um, but I just feel like our preacher does a very great job of all of it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, every church has, has their things, issues. issues and things that you wish were different. Like, I wish our music was different. Yeah. it's Our music is great, but I wish it was different because it's not really my preference. Yeah. But who gives a rat's tail? Yeah. You know? Because at the end preference. of the day, yeah. that's not why we're there. Yeah, exactly. It just helps. There's so many more pros for my family than there are yeah. cons about and, the music. And another thing is... Um, and it, what's crazy is like you, like we enjoy the music, or at least I do. And I know that there's things that you wish you could see change or like switch up or, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But what's crazy to me is that's how you see it. And then I see it as, oh my gosh, this is like such a huge change from what I was used to. So to me, this is like the sweet spot for me. Yeah. Like it's not too contemporary yeah. Yeah. rock star concert. I'm yeah. not a fan. And I'm not into that either. Uh, I'm not into that. I love to listen to that music. Yeah. But I don't want to, I don't, I'm not into that at church. Yeah. But, but I, I love it was, it's an actual such a band. Happy medium. Like, like truly gifted <laughs> singers. Yeah. And, the time that's put into it, like yeah. you know, they've prepared. Yeah, absolutely. And that's another thing. Like, and when I the, say that the music is not really my cup of tea, I don't mean that in a way that it's not good. It is really good. It's phenomenal, and they do a great job of it. You just want more. I just, I'm a different style. Yeah, and I love the songs that they yeah. do. I just wish that there were, I wish that there were some at least at bare minimum someone playing a, like an acoustic guitar who yeah. also sang yeah so Some that drums. so that if one of, one of the songs ended and they wanted to sing it again or sing a part of it again or the preacher wanted them to uh, let's sing that chorus again or whatever yeah. we don't have to do a cappella and we don't have to start the cd over you right. know what i mean yeah. that would that's all that i want yeah <laughs> but you know you don't always get what you want but it is what it is yeah i can and live, I do, I can live with it in the in the thing about it is i do feel like our church is still growing oh, every yeah. week. So it's I don't doubt that at some point that's probably going to come to be. Yeah. And I think it's almost, uh, from what I've seen, I feel like our church has hit the snowball um, effect that once it gets going for a certain amount of time, you can't stop it. Yeah. That it's growing now at such a rapid rate that like I wouldn't want to be in charge of figuring out how to service that. Mm-mm. Yeah, um, it's crazy. So, but anyway, that was a lot to say that uh, we found a church that we like. <laughs> yeah. And I think <laughs> but what you were talking about is in preference as far as, you know, what you look for for your family. This is a lot a kid, different whatever. before you have a kid. It is. And I do, I truly think, like, after all the churches I've been in, and all the different styles of preaching yeah. and music and all of it. I really feel like the number one thing for me, and this is across the board in all areas of the church, is preparedness. Yeah. I don't want to go to a church where they don't know what... I don't want to walk into a church that doesn't have music playing. At all. Yeah. Before your church service even starts. Yeah. One, because I feel like it makes people at ease. It makes people yeah, yeah, feel yeah. comfortable. Oh, yeah. You don't feel like you've got to find somebody to talk to because it's so oh, quiet. Yeah. It just, it helps. Yeah. And then like the people that understand that will understand that. And the people that don't are just going to be like, that's ridiculous. But, <laughs> and I, I don't want to go into a church where nobody looked at nobody prepared nobody knows what we're singing 
what songs, what key we're in, what soundtrack it's on. Yeah. Like, I love that our church, I mean, this is these people's job. Yeah. And for a long time, I did not understand that. Yeah. That people, like, get paid to make sure things run yeah. smoothly. Because every every aspect of it is an opportunity to capture someone. Yeah, and, like, if someone misses... Yeah. The, the opportunity to come to know Jesus. Or if someone who doesn't, you know, if someone gets invited who doesn't go to church. Yeah. And they come in and somebody's up on the stage shuffling through papers and practicing a song right before the service starts. Mm-hmm. It lets them know that, like, they, yeah, it might be good, but they didn't really care enough to have yeah. it ready beforehand, you know? Yeah. There's just a lot of aspects of it that preparedness factors into. Yeah. So I'm I'm a hundred percent with you on that. And I'm always I've always been a big hater of sheet music. Like if you can't now I say that, but I've used it in the past, but I don't like it. Yeah. I think that if you're going to do a song, memorize it. Mm-hmm. That shows that you one, you're not gonna mess it up because you don't have to look down on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And two you cared enough about it to take the time to memorize it. Yeah. So. Well, in nine times out of ten, churches now it's on a screen in front of them, so you yeah. never know that they're. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I agree. Anyways. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, I think that is really it. It's changed the way I look at how one how churches ran, but two how much they care about. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, how how much they care and the effort that they put in mm-hmm. to help reach lost people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you expect your preacher to study throughout the week and be ready with a message and have three bullet points and yeah. two, you know, whatever. But, like, why would we not expect that from... Yeah. The music from the from any, media, from any, the security, yeah, like, yeah. in I mean, everything. There's, from the children's teachers. Yeah. You know? Like, be prepared because that's your ministry. Yeah, and I think our church does a really good job they of that. They are. They're fantastic. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I know that was my topic, and it took a little while, but did you have anything else on your list? Um... I've got one more thing that I want to hit before we end. I mean, you can well, which we can, I don't well, really we, have we, anything, we, like, major. What else did you have on there? Uh, unpopular opinions. Unpopular opinions. Yeah. Explain. What do you mean? Like, and some of it's, I mean, most of them's, like, not even realistic. Yeah. And I didn't even have time to, like, write them down except one. And this is super far out there, but my unpopular opinion is that I feel like you should have to have some form of a license to be able to have a child. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, and I don't mean, I, I just mean there should be some kind of test, a, a license, a proof of something saying that you. <laughs> That would, pro- that would definitely be an unpopular opinion. Yeah. And and like and I'm not talking about the people that like can't have kids that are struggling because yeah. they would already have that piece of paper. Yeah. Because they're the most prepared and the most ready. I'm just talking about the people that don't care yeah. and just dirt put out bag, all these dirt kids. Bags who have, there should be some way yeah. to crack like, crackheads who have six kids and can't take care of them. Yeah. Like you should have to have a license of some yeah. kind of preparedness, or, or at very minimum, the. I'm not a proponent for government being involved in. Yeah, me. In either. everyday life, however, I think maybe on the state level, there should be some type of oversight, maybe, for. And I know that we have that through like DSS and stuff, but there's so little of them and so many yeah. families with kids. I mean, you see it every day. Yeah, right? yeah, I do. Um, 
But yeah, that would be definitely be an unpopular opinion. And but I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with I don't know how it you. would work. And I don't know. I don't because yeah. I, I don't want the government involved. But at the same yeah. time, they'd kind of have to be. Yeah. But there just ha- there should be something. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to pass this to be able to bring a child into yeah. this world. I agree. <laughs> but I um, know it's not like that. But that's just like a random unpopular opinion that's always lived in my head rent free. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah unpopular opinion that's lived in your head rent free that's <laughs> awesome I like that <laughs> um, I don't have any more points I didn't get a chance to write them down so uh, un- unpopular opinion I'm trying to think of one that I ha- I know I have some um, I think that You know, I really don't know. I feel like it's a topically a topic that you have to like kind of think about. It's not one of those spur of the moment. I will tell you what, I will think about that, and I will come back next week. Okay. With my unpopular opinion, and I will blast you with it. Okay. What was your other point that you wanted to hit? So I have two quick things. Okay. Um, this is kind of shifted more to like uh, current events, natural. I mean, not natural. This is definitely not natural. <laughs> Um, current events, news, stuff like that. Uh-huh. So right now, um, this is political question. Oh God, here we go. So I'm I, uh, the older that I get, the more and more of my father that I feel. I, know, I feel that I'm becoming. I know, I know. And so I just and with this year being. This is probably the most important election year in our history. In our history. For sure. There is, I don't know if you know this or not, but there is 40 uh, countries in the world that are holding elections this year. Yeah. It's never that many has never happened at one time mm-hmm. before. So there's a crap ton of nervous people. Yeah. Right now. Um, so my question to you is, and I'll answer the question too. My question is right now, if someone knocked on the door and said the, uh, elections changed, it's going to be tonight. You have to go vote tonight. You get two questions. First question is who are you voting for if Donald Trump is not an option? Mm. And if he was an option, if he is the option, would you vote for him? I think if he is the option, I probably will. I probably would vote for him. If he's not. Podcast canceled. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Shut us down. Um, if he's not on the ballot. If he's not on the ballot right now, who are you voting for? Um, oh Just to refresh it, you've got, yeah. if he's not on the ballot right now. Uh, yeah, well, who are my options again? I haven't done, right I, now. I haven't dug as deep as you have. Yeah, so right now, your options are Nikki Haley. No. <laughs> um, Vivek Ramaswamy. This, this is a Republican primary candidate. Okay. I'm assuming that you're Republican because yeah. I know that you're a Republican. I'm I'm independent. <laughs> yeah, you're you're whoever is, I'm whoever lines up with my beliefs, whether there they're go. Democrat there or go. Republican. Okay. She's bipartisan, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um you've got Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, Chris Christie has dropped out. Yeah. Um you've got Ron DeSantis. No. <laughs> and uh, I think Tim Scott, maybe. I don't know if he's dropped out yet or not. He's for sure. Is he gonna, run? He's probably going to drop out. Probably. Yeah, is he running? Yeah, that, that means she's definitely not voting for him. I just didn't know. I don't <laughs> yeah, have was, a problem. Yeah, he was with running. Him. He was running. I don't think I have a problem with him. Um, I haven't done my research. That's yeah. my problem. So out of the and you've got the independent candidate uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, which we'll get into at a later date. But, oh my gosh. So you got uh, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis, or RFK? Okay, so in 
if Trump is not an option. If Trump's not an option, Nikki Haley's not it. Ron DeSantis. Why is, is Nikki not. Haley not it? Because she she sounds good. She's yeah. made some good points, but she's also twisted herself in in okay. things. Like I haven't. And I'm not going to ask you. I'm not asking you to like explain your decision okay, for each good, candidate because, because like, I, I know you haven't done like a bunch of research on them. Yeah. But I'm just asking face value. If I was just curious to hear what you had to say about Nikki Haley. But anyway, it's there's some things I do agree yeah. with, but I mean because she's a Republican candidate. But yeah. there's other things I just kind of mm, I'm not a fan. I don't know. She seems a little fake. Yeah. Anyways, but my I, it would it would it would be between Vivek mm-hmm. Vivek whatever yep. him Vivek or RFK. Okay. I love RFK. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't so much. We were talking recently about yeah. some stuff that I yeah. wasn't. I think it's more of we don't know where he stands on it. Isn't that what it yeah, is? Yeah, there's a lot of things that he's kind of he hasn't really clarified, to re- refused to address at this point. And because of that, it makes me kind of nervous. Eh, yeah. I don't know, but he's. He understands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he like he, he's very, very aligned with us on some. He's a things. crunchy person. Yeah, <laughs> and I can get down with it. Yeah, he, and he's very smart. And yeah. Big Pharma hates him, and yeah. I think that's why I love him. But I also the literally the only thing so far, and I haven't done a whole bunch of research. This is just like face value some clips i've seen yeah. kind of deal i really like the way vivek sounds and the things he's saying the only thing that i don't obviously agree with is he's hindu sure but we have the freedom to worship whatever god sure. we want to worship yeah. sure but and i've heard him compare um it was a, I think it was like a clip off of TikTok or something, but he was basically saying that just because, like, like we both pray, mm-hmm. it might be to two different whatever, yeah. but he overall in general believes the same, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I need to do more research. Okay. But well, minus, we'll table that. minus table his that. like religion part of it. Sure. Other than that, everything he's saying is pretty. Yeah. And I like him because he's not a politician. Yep. But it, I don't know if Trump wasn't on the ballot, it would be between if RFK would clear some things up. Yeah. And I know he's Democrat, is he not? Is he not, not running? A, he's independent now. Oh. Okay. He he left the Democratic Party. I mean, he should. Yeah, <laughs> but if they weren't can, gonna let him run, probably because he won't answer some things. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff they weren't gonna allow him to do, so he had to drop from their party and run independent. I don't. I, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, it would be between, oh, excuse me, RFK or Vivek if Trump isn't on the ballot. Okay. Um, I. And I didn't know up until recently, because I've asked myself this question quite a bit. Um, And recently, I have made a decision on this, that if Trump is not on the ballot, then I will... Are we writing him in? No. (laughs) No. Even though he would get wrote in quite a bit. Yeah. Probably the most write-ins of anyone in history. Yeah, for sure. Um, But if Trump was not on the ballot, I would 100% vote for Vivek Ramaswamy. Just because of everything except his religion Mm -hmm. stuff. And that's the part that kind of like scares me because I feel like a lot of Republicans vote that way because of their religion. Yeah. But it's not that his... He still has the same moral values. Yeah, and you could go on for days about the, you know, the religion part, but in my personal opinion 
I think that the government should stay out of mm -hmm. religion. Yeah. They should stay out of it. And because of that, on the flip side of that coin, I should not base my decision on just whether someone is a Christian or not. That is as true. As the president. Because their job is not to... There's no president, even if they are a Christian, that is going to stand up in the White House and, in my opinion, lead people to the Lord. Yeah. That's not his primary job anyway. Yeah. But then, I guess, on the other side of that coin, you our wonder, country is founded yeah. on God. Yeah. Not whatever God. Yeah, I agree. And I guess everybody might have their own God. You know, but I guess yeah. that's the part that's kind of yeah, it's eh, iffy. It's, because it's, it's, it's I mean, our country in God we trust, <laughs> and we know that that is yeah. the Christian yeah. God. So that's the part that's kind of like, well, that I don't really make sense. I think that Trump will be on the ballot, <laughs> and that I will vote for him ultimately. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it I here. Won't, I'm, Vivek, a, I'm gonna say it here. VP. I'm gonna say it here, and make my prediction. My prediction, and I think this is already in the making. I think this is already happening. And I'm not the only one who said this. I think uh, Patrick, Bet David, and a bunch of other people that I listen to have also said this. But Vivek knows that, based on the polls, that he is probably not going to win the primary. Mm -hmm. Just simply because Trump has such an astronomical number of followers. Yeah. Um. But he is going to continue to the end of the primary race mm -hmm. simply as an audition for VP. VP. Yeah. And as an audition to try and knock Nikki Haley down. Yeah. Um, I think that Trump is going to get elected and that he will, in my opinion, I would love it if he did. I don't know if he will or not, but I would love it if he chose Vivek as his VP. Yeah. I think that would be awesome because Vivek is such a good communicator. I've listened to a ton of his speeches recently. Yeah. Um, and I've listened to him because he's tr – this is one thing about Trump that I don't like, that Trump has relied on – Trump hates mainstream media. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he has also relied on mainstream media. Yeah. I see that. There is no other media outlets that Trump has gone on, with the exception of maybe a handful. But these guys like RFK and Vivek, that they will go on any podcast, mm -hmm. any town hall. It's unscripted, and that's when you know that they really know their stuff. Yeah. When you can sit in a two-hour podcast and yeah. answer questions for two hours. Yeah. About what you believe, why you believe it, and what you're planning on doing. What are you planning on doing with this and this and this? And uh, I think Trump should have or could have done a lot more of that. Because yeah. that's really where I think this is the last mainstream media election. Mm -hmm. I think after this, after this election, this next four years, the mainstream media is just kaput. Both sides. Because mm -hmm. nobody watches it. People get their news from... Uh, independent news sources, mm -hmm. podcasts, Joe Rogan, because we're PBD, all sick because of they're being lied beca to. because yeah, exactly because you're you're allowed to speak your mind because there's no one paying for it. It's independent yeah. media. Um, so that's my prediction. That's how I feel about it. Now, last thing, have you seen this thing with this circles back to the church question? Have you seen this thing in the news with, correct me if I'm not pronouncing it right, Lil Nas X? No. Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. Search this in your Google. Oh, gosh. This is how bad it is. Search the word J, the letter J, space, and then Christ. And then just start typing his name. It's an album cover. Pull it up and look at it. 
You have got to be kidding me. You haven't seen this? No. That is unbelievable, is it not? I just don't know how he hasn't been like Oh. Struck by lightning. It's. I don't even want to look at it. He is literally full of the devil. Like. And I sure it ain't watching the music video. But no, I don't even want to see it. The. The album cover is unbelievable. Mm. The. <laughs> Like, I just, I couldn't get over it when I seen it. Oh. I said, there's no way. I get that these musicians are pushing the envelope on a lot of stuff. But That's this, this way is too far. so beyond the envelope. Even comedians that I listen to on the regular were like, hey, I'm a hellion, but that's too far. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, that's unbelievable. <clears throat> and it almost makes you wonder of how can... How can a person like that sit back and do that? <clears throat> because I've always been told growing up, I've always thought, well, and this isn't like a verse in the Bible that I read, but yeah. an old Southern Baptist preacher saying is that God is only going to allow you to drag his name through the mm -hmm. mud for so long. Yeah. And eventually, he's going to put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. Now. And he's already done some like... Some real bad stuff. Yeah. But this. Like trying to claim he was pregnant. Yeah. But this. That is. Is unbelievable. I don't. I didn't even want to look at it. It just really like creeps me out. It's that unbelievable. That is Satan at its finest. Like. I just don't understand. How it can even be. That just tells you how... Like, what boardroom meeting at the record label are you sitting in? And they say, hey, we got an idea. I want no part you in know? that company. Like what, None. What is that? <laughs> like, who agreed that that was a good idea? Who's listening and watching to it? You know? Mm -mm. That's crazy. I just wanted to bring that up and see if you had seen horrifying. that. That's horrifying. The song is literally called J. Christ. No. He's gonna if he wakes if we find out tomorrow morning that he's turned to a pillar of salt we'll know. Yeah, we'll know. We, we called it. <laughs> we called me. it. Yeah, that's You just can't huh? be doing stuff like that. I mean the sacro I mean the sa if you want to go off and be a hellion, go off and be a hellion. But don't don't be the sacrilegious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go be a hellion on your own stuff. Yeah, that's too far. But don't bring, mm. like, even, I wouldn't even condone them doing something like this to somebody else's religion. Yeah. Because you know he wouldn't have done this with, like. Buddha. Well, like, <laughs> Muhammad or something like that. Yeah. You already know he wouldn't have done that. I just thought that was crazy, and I thought you needed to see it. I don't want to see it. I wish I hadn't seen it. I feel it. like you need to go take a shower now. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. If for if anybody's watching and you don't want to look it up, it is a photo of the is he a rapper or a singer? He's not good. Well so what does he do? Does he sing or rap? Or does he do both, both or something? I guess. So the singer and rapper Little Nas X. He's the one that did the old town road thing. Yeah. The same guy who swore he was pregnant. Yeah. And he has got a new song called J. Christ. And on the front album cover, he is on a cross, nailed to a cross, and appearing to uh, attempt to look like Jesus. And these people are lifting the cross up with ropes. And it is horrifying. I just don't. It's rough. But anyway, as a public service announcement. Probably, probably don't let your kids listen to Little Nas X. <laughs> yeah. Um, I need to get this off my screen because it's making do. me sick. Delete it out of your browser history. <laughs> um. But anyway, um, what else you got? Anything? Uh, 
No, I think we're good. It's been like an hour and a half. Oh, well. Wow. Almost. It? Yeah. Um, well, I guess that's it. And uh, thank you guys for listening. This is episode number two. Yeah. Um, and we will see you guys next week in episode number three. Hope you all have a